History is riddled with mysterious artifacts that continue to baffle and intrigue archaeologists and historians alike. Among these objects are the Folkton drums, a unique set of chalk cylinders discovered in Britain. For years, their purpose remained a mystery, but recent studies by University College London and the University of Manchester have shed light on their possible function. These artifacts are now believed to have played a crucial role in the construction of monumental structures such as Stonehenge. To understand the significance of these artifacts, we must first journey back over 4,000 years to Neolithic Britain. This was a time of great change, as people transitioned from a nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle to settled farming communities. It was during this period, from around 4000 to 2500 BC, that some of Britain's most iconic prehistoric monuments were constructed. The Neolithic saw the building of causewayed enclosures, long barrows, and eventually the great stone circles and henges that still captivate us today. These monumental structures required sophisticated engineering and organizational skills to create. They also suggest the development of shared spiritual or ritual beliefs that motivated communities to undertake such ambitious building projects. It was against this backdrop that the Folkton drums were created. In 1889, Canon William Greenwell was excavating a Bronze Age round barrow near the village of Folkton in the East Riding of Yorkshire. Within the barrow, he discovered the burial of a young child. Alongside the child's remains were three intricately carved cylinders made of chalk. These objects quickly became known as the Folkton drums, though they are not musical instruments. They are solid chalk cylinders with flat bases, convex tops, and elaborately decorated sides. The largest is about 146 mm in diameter, while the smallest is 140 mm across. Their sides are covered with geometric patterns and stylized faces or masks. For many years, the Folkton drums were considered unique artifacts. But in 1993, over 100 years after their discovery, a similar object was found during excavations near Levant in West Sussex. This fourth drum was slightly smaller than the middle-sized Folkton example, but clearly part of the same tradition. The purpose and meaning of these enigmatic objects has been debated ever since their discovery. Were they ritual items? Toys? Containers for precious materials? Their association with a child burial suggests they held deep significance, but the nature of that significance remained elusive. Now, new research has suggested an intriguing possibility that these artifacts may have played a crucial role in the layout and construction of Neolithic monuments like Stonehenge. Researchers Anne Tether, Andrew Chamberlain, and Mike Parker Pearson have published a paper proposing that the Folkton and Levant drums were in fact standardized measuring devices used in monumental construction. Their insight came from noticing similarities between the dimensions of the drums and a unit of measurement previously identified at Stonehenge. In 2007, Chamberlain and Parker Pearson had proposed that Stonehenge was laid out using a standard unit they called the long foot, equal to 0.3219 meters, or 1.056 modern feet. When they examined the circumferences of the chalk drums, they found a remarkable correspondence. The smallest Folkton drum has a circumference almost exactly equal to one long foot. The other drums have circumferences that are close to simple fractions of 10 long feet, 910, 810, and 710 respectively. This suggests the drums may have been used as standards to measure out lengths of cord or rope for use in laying out the giant circles of Stonehenge and other monuments. By wrapping cord around the drums a set number of times, builders could quickly create standard lengths. The set of four drums together would allow the easy creation of fractional lengths as well. This could have been crucial for the precise layout of complex monuments with multiple concentric circles and other geometric elements. If this theory is correct, it would provide rare insight into the sophisticated mathematical and engineering knowledge of Neolithic Britons. The ability to reproduce standard units of measurement across wide geographical areas implies a shared system of knowledge and planning. The implications go beyond engineering. If these measuring tools were buried with a child, it suggests the passing on of specialized knowledge was seen as deeply important. Perhaps certain children were groomed from an early age to become the engineers and architects of monumental structures. This interpretation also sheds new light on the decorative elements of the drums. The intricate geometric patterns may not be merely aesthetic, but could encode information about how the measuring devices were to be used. 
The human faces might represent ancestral figures or deities associated with the sacred knowledge of monument building. The idea that these artifacts were tools for monumental construction does not negate their ritual or spiritual significance. In many ancient cultures, mathematics and astronomy were deeply intertwined with religious beliefs. The ability to accurately measure and recreate cosmic alignments may have been seen as a form of sacred knowledge. If the drums were indeed measuring devices, it raises questions about how widespread this system may have been. The Folkton drums come from Yorkshire, while Levant is in West Sussex, both quite distant from Stonehenge in Wiltshire. This implies the measuring system may have been used across a wide swath of Neolithic Britain. Researchers have identified other monuments that may have used the same measurement system, including the Southern Circle at Durrington Walls near Stonehenge, the Ring of Brodgar in Orkney, and the Great Circle at New Grange in Ireland. This suggests a shared cosmological understanding may have spread with the adoption of new cultural practices like grooved ware pottery around 3000 BC. However, more research is needed to confirm how widespread this measuring system truly was. Many circular monuments from this period have not been excavated or measured precisely enough to test the theory. Future investigations may reveal if this was a localized practice or truly a pan-British phenomenon. The researchers also raise the possibility that the chalk drums may be skeuomorphs, representations in one material of objects usually made in another. The delicate chalk may have been too fragile for repeated use as a measuring tool. Instead, the drums might be ritual representations of wooden cylinders that served as the actual measuring devices. If true, it might explain why so few of these measuring devices have been found. The wooden versions would not have survived in the archaeological record. The chalk drums remain a subject of ongoing study and debate. Advanced imaging techniques like reflectance transformation imaging, RTI, have revealed evidence that the decorative designs were repeatedly erased and recarved. This suggests the drums were curated over time, with their appearance adjusted for unknown reasons. As research continues, the Folkton and Levant drums may reveal even more about how ancient Britons understood their world and reshaped their landscape with monumental architecture. These small artifacts connect us to the people who, over 4,000 years ago, imagined and built the great circles of stone and earth that still inspire wonder today. The chalk drums are just one thread in a complex tapestry of Neolithic life that archaeologists are still working to unravel. Who knows what other secrets may yet be unlocked from the sacred landscapes of ancient Britain. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about fascinating archaeological discoveries, be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and leave a comment below. Stay tuned for more intriguing insights into history and archaeology.